doesn't mean anything to be working class or middle class anymore. The only thing that matters is if you own a home or if you don't. The home you live in now statistically makes more money than you do. And the last hope that a lot of young people have to catch up is getting a house gifted to them by a relative. Which begs the question, what happens to the real estate market when all the boomers die? Anyone looking to buy a home right now is facing a double challenge amid the Federal Reserve's efforts to slow inflation. But even in places where houses are usually expensive, they seem even more expensive. Housing is becoming a luxury that the majority of first-time home buyers cannot afford. There is an old saying that the best time to start investing was 30 years ago. The second best time is right now. But that conventional wisdom might not hold up in today's market. Buying a home at the right time could set you and your family up for financial security for the rest of your life. The only thing is, the right time was when you were still in school, and if you try and buy a home now, you will be taking on record high interest rates, record high prices, and record low availability all at the same time. People sell homes for two reasons, because they want to and because they have to. Nobody who already has a home wants to sell it because most Americans have been able to lock in record low interest rates. If they sell their house and buy another one, they will get a new mortgage at interest rates which will triple their payments on a home of the same value. According to data from the National Association of Realtors, 87% of new home purchases are made using a mortgage. And the average down payment of a first home buyer is only 7%. That means higher mortgage rates are worth avoiding at all costs. A report by the Wall Street Journal found that even when homeowners moved interstate, they would hold on to their homes and rent them out and then rent another house to live in. Everybody that wants to sell their home is waiting for interest rates to fall. Everybody who wants to buy a home is also waiting for interest rates to fall. And everybody who is stuck renting is being forced to compete with people who already own a home but don't want to sell it because they have locked in a sweet interest rate. The players in the real estate market are stuck in a Mexican standoff but the renters are stuck fighting with a banana. The only hope for people who just want to buy a home is to get it off someone who needs to sell. According to another report published by the National Association of Realtors, the average home seller in America was 60 years old. At that age, one of the reasons people need to sell their home is because they are dead. But if you are holding out hope that the biggest homeowning generation in America, downsizing will make it easier for people trying to buy their first home, I am here to do what I do best and crush your dreams with facts and figures. There are three reasons why older generations permanently <laughs> exiting the above ground real estate market isn't going to make it easier to buy a house. The first reason is that they can take it with them when they are gone. The inequality between homeowners and renters is even worse in old age. According to data from LendingTree, 8 out of 10 Americans aged over 65 own their own home, and only 19% of those still have a mortgage. The fastest growing reason why they are selling their homes is not because they are dying. It's because they need money to pay for retirement living. A report by the Washington Post found that the annual cost of nursing homes has gone from a median of $65,000 a year in 2004 to $108,000 a year in 2020 when the article was published. Conditions in nursing homes have also been getting worse as it's one of the fastest growing asset classes for private equity companies like Blackstone and Bain looking to get higher returns on real estate. In 2017, Blackstone closed a $745 million deal with the real estate investment trust Welltower to buy its portfolio of 3,400 aged care units. Blackstone's holdings are growing, but they are dwarfed by other private equity firms that have raised billions directly into aged living because they know how much value it offers investors. By cutting costs and raising prices, these companies have generated exceptional yields off real estate developments that cater to a growing market of elderly Americans. Most Americans don't make $108,000 a year, and even fewer can afford that much in retirement, so people are selling their homes to pay their fees to these facilities. Private equity's role in buying up single-family homes away from regular families is overstated, but they have realized that they don't even need to own the homes to benefit from their value. States where home prices were highest had the most expensive aged care facilities, because elderly residents in those states have more money to pay for it after selling their homes. People that can't afford to pay these fees are relying on limited social security and their own family and friends to support them when they can no longer physically work. According to federal data, in a 2020 Brookings study, slightly more than 10% of American adults provide some type of care to another adult. Usually, it is an adult children caring for their parents. 
In an interview with the Washington Post, Jan Mutchler, a director of the Gerontology Institute at the University of Massachusetts, said that when an adult child takes on those roles, a lot of times they have to give something else up. And sometimes that's some of their work or all of their job. So if you are waiting for that inheritance to finally buy your first home, it's just as likely that this wealth will be sucked up by private equity companies before it gets to you. And that's just the first reason. So it's time to learn how money works to find out why you probably won't benefit as much as you are hoping from the boomers passing down their homes. This week's lesson was sponsored by Revolut. Revolut is a global financial super app used by over 30 million users that gives you the tools to easily save, spend, and invest your money. My team and I work from all over the world, and we found Revolut to be useful for our personal and business needs. Why? They offer multi-currency accounts with low FX fees, making it easy to send money worldwide with little to no fees. Plus, when you travel, you can withdraw cash with no fees from over 55,000 ATMs globally. Revolut makes it easy for us to send money peer-to-peer -peer in over 40 countries. Choose the Revolut plan that fits your needs. Standard, which costs $0 per month, premium, or metal. I've been using the metal plan for over a year now, and I love it. Start using Revolut today by using my link in the description. The average age of a first home buyer in America is now 35 years old, up from 33 years old in 2021 and just 30 years old in 2010. A survey of young home buyers conducted by Freddie Mac and Bankrate asked why young people were waiting until later in life to buy a home. I probably don't need to tell you that the number one response was that people wanted to buy their first home sooner, but they couldn't afford it until they had paid off their student loans, progressed in their career, and had dedicated years of saving a down payment. New financial products that offer home lending with lower down payment requirements have been ruled out by banks, non-bank lenders, and the government as an answer to this problem. The average down payment of 7% means that some first-time homebuyers are contributing significantly less to their first purchase by using products like the Federal Housing Administration Loan Insurance, which allows first-time buyers to put down as little as 3% of the purchase price plus closing costs. Companies like Zillow are taking this a step further, with plans to roll out 1% down payment financing to eligible homebuyers nationwide. If you are someone who wants to buy their first home, these offers may look like they are there to help you out, but they are actually just making the problem even worse. The only people these lending products are really helping out are the people who already own multiple properties, which according to Redfin, are mostly baby boomers who own $18 trillion worth of real estate. According to the disclosures of these loan products, most offers have a limit on the total loan size that can be taken out. These products are meant for first-time homebuyers who want to buy a basic home, so that's fair enough. But all that it really does is pump up the price of affordable homes until they become unaffordable again, in an even worse way. What these loan products do is move the financial bottleneck from the down payment to the repayments. Just because someone can get into a $750,000 house with only $10,000 down doesn't mean they'll be able to afford the repayments. A down payment is a one-time expense, but repayments on a house that is more expensive than it should be because of a loan product like this have to be paid every month for the next 30 years. The only real winners are the people that purchased these homes when they were a quarter of their current value and can now sell them to buyers with risky financing. And that's the second reason why boomers retiring from life isn't going to make it easier for you to find a home. It was never a matter of age. According to the U.S. Census Bureau estimates from 2016, the number of families with children who own their own home decreased by 3.6 million in the 10 years prior to the survey. Families with children were preferring to rent either because of the flexibility it offered or because they could not afford to buy their own home. Families that own their own home also have fewer children on average, and the overall national home ownership rate has decreased by 3.4%. However, the small number of families that own multiple pieces of real estate as rental properties or holiday homes is growing. According to the 2022 Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances, only 6% of Americans own property that they inherited, and only 3% live in a property that was passed down to them. The other homes are being kept by a small handful of children from wealthy families as investment properties, often in addition to the homes that they already own themselves. So if you think you just need to wait out the boomers to finally afford a home, unfortunately, the statistics say that their estates are only going to become more concentrated in the hands of fewer people. Their age doesn't matter, but their wealth does. 
An article by Bloomberg surveyed people with adult children and found that a majority of respondents reported draining their own retirement savings to support their children who are struggling to afford a home to live in. Some families are going to leave multiple homes to a few children. Some families are going to make big sacrifices to help their children. Some families don't have enough to help at all, and some families are going to need support from their children. If you are not a part of the first two groups, then you are going to be even further behind when assets are passed down from older generations. And that's the third reason why you shouldn't hold out hope for a flood of new houses hitting the market when all the boomers die. They aren't leaving houses for you. A 2017 census report found that a third of counties in America were experiencing more deaths than births. States like Florida have a lot of old wealthy retirees that have displaced normal families in certain communities. The homes that are being left in these areas don't have the amenities that first home buyers want, like access to job opportunities or good school districts, because retirees pick places to live to avoid these things. If the people who inherit these properties don't want to live in a community full of retirees, they can either sell the property or rent it out. If they sell the property, it will add supply to the housing market, but it won't be in an area where a first home buyer wants to purchase. According to the State of Housing published by Harvard University, institutional investors have seen this gap and are targeting affordable homes, especially in the Sun Belt, because they offer a good risk-adjusted return on investment. The role of institutional investors like private equity firms in the real estate market is almost always sensationalized, but they account for 13% of all residential sales in 2021, according to a report published by the National Association of Realtors. It doesn't call for the stupid f***ing laser eyes just yet, but in the Sunbelt counties that they are targeting, they are an even larger share of buyers, and they have moved the market. So, baby boomers are going to leave their homes behind, but they will mostly be leaving them to their already wealthy children or institutional investors. Probably not the story you wanted to hear, but I couldn't give up on an opportunity to shit on your dreams to get 2024 started on the right note. These desperate times are calling for desperate measures, which is why more smart and well-educated people than ever are falling for scams that offer the vague hope of lifting them out of the rat race. This has been a common theme of hard times for thousands of years. And to see why, go and watch my new video over on how history works to find out why fraud never changes, but we keep on falling for it. If you are not already one of the 10,000 people subscribed to my totally free email newsletter compounded daily, you should check it out, because myself and some of the best finance creators will be releasing major articles in the new year that will be posted there exclusively. So if you're not already subscribed, follow the link in the video description to keep on learning how money works.